evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. I am Hina Gambhir. This Friday evening on Urban Debate, let's put the spotlight on cryptocurrencies. Back in news once again. This time because of a statement by India's new chief economic advisor, V. Anant Nageswaran, who has said that cryptocurrencies are akin to a world of Caribbean pirates in the absence of a centralized regulatory authority and is yet to pass the test of a fiat currency. Now, this statement, viewers, comes after the sudden crash of Terra ecosystem that sent shockwaves across the cryptocurrency community across the world. It was considered a stable coin with a market cap of over $18 billion before the crash. Many investors lost their entire life savings after this abrupt crash. And this is being considered as a black swan event with consequences not only for its own investors, but for the entire crypto ecosystem. The chief economic advisor has called it a very important cautionary tale. Endorsing the view of Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor, the Chief Economic Advisor has also said that as of now, cryptos appear to be a case of regulatory arbitrage rather than a case of true financial innovation. Is crypto regulation on the cards? Is it coming very, very soon? How should we read this statement of the new Chief Economic Advisor? Remember, the bill on cryptocurrency regulation has been pending to be introduced in Parliament since Budget 2021. Is it time now to bring clarity on cryptos? And which way should India move? That's going to be our focus on Urban Debate this evening. Joining us on the broadcast is Subhash Chandra Garg, former finance secretary of the country, Ajit Khurana, founder, Reflexical, a very well-known expert as far as the crypto market is concerned, Dr. Aruna Sharma, former member Digitization Committee, RBL. We also have with us Khushbu Jain, Advocate Supreme Court. Good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening. Uh, Dr. Aruna Sharma, let me begin the discussion with you this time. What do you make of the statement that has come from the Chief Economic Advisor? And how should we see uh, this statement with respect to what has happened uh, with a crypto coin that was considered to be quite stable. Uh, you are absolutely right that uh, the statement has come more as underlining or highlighting the cautioning note that it is a speculative investment and not yet regulated. And the state crash in the stable coin has very clearly said that if you look at the crypto so Genesis itself, uh, you know, it is coming from encryption. And basically, there is nothing tangible with it. Even if we say it's stable coin, it is pegged with something. It only allows to move the unit from one person to another without the involvement of a third party. And that is how it works. So what is very, very important is one, a cautioning note that anybody who is investing in crypto as an investment option should do it with consciousness, with the kind of crash which we have seen. And two, there is a strong need for a regulation when we are coming to it. And regulation is to define crypto because in India, unfortunately, we have not defined crypto at all. That, yes, it is an encrypted system. And when you look at it, uh, you know, there is a mining which is using computer power because what is that? It's no big innovation. It's not correct because you use computer power to solve complicated mathematical problems. And that's how this crypto mining happens. And it is a dig digital decentralized system. If you look at it, you know, it's changed from the centralized way, how you manage the finances and money and monetary control. So these are some of the innovations and the public let you go in the blockchain. So on these innovations, yes, it is speculative like a market, like an asset, and therefore it is very important to define crypto very categorically, define it as an asset class, regulate it accordingly as an asset class, and definitely already there is a relook into the taxation process has already started. So coming to a straight point that, okay, right. pegged with stable coin, it did crash, but then it is an offering of a need for a strong regulatory mechanisms. 
absolutely. Mr. Subhash Chandra Garg, when the chief economic advisor himself is saying what happened with Terra Crypto is a very important cautionary tale. So don't you think this calls for some sort of a clarity for this ecosystem that is growing every single day here in India? We know a lot of people, a lot of investors have lost their life savings in that biggest crash that happened in the month of May. Shouldn't the government now be a little quick or should it wait for global consensus on this issue as you know the comments have been suggesting see uh, the crypto system is virtually an anti thesis of the centralized currency system which we have in the country uh, the fiat currency is created by the central bank is regulated by the then it is also its circulation is also decided and modulated by the central bank whereas cryptocurrencies is uh, a completely decentralized system where there is no central authority um, it's all solved managed and worked by a, a consensus mechanism which works amongst the participants and basically the machines which participate so i find it very uh, difficult this dialogue to that there would be somewhere a regulation of cryptocurrencies as such you can regulate exchanges but you can't regulate the cryptocurrencies which are decentralized now your comment about uh, the uh, luna terra um, uh, that is a stable coin which mimics the uh, the uh, currencies in uh, the dollar uh, in many cases but this was a very badly designed kind of a stable coin where the um, the uh, peg uh, was also another cryptocurrency and if the other cryptocurrencies goes haywire then the main stable coin uh, becomes completely unstable if there is another stable coin which is linked to uh, the dollar asset it will not uh, fall like it has not fallen in case of us tether or usdt and otherwise and therefore we should not overreact we should consider like what happened in the dot com bubble where a lot of new innovation had come in in the form of this uh, digital um, uh, portals and the companies uh, many of them fell by wayside but today the entire world has moved towards the e-commerce and therefore what we should be doing is to sift out the process uh, the technology the innovation and what is good Uh, should be allowed to be uh, to to be uh, developed function flourish mm -hmm. and what is bad uh, either the market forces themselves will weed them out or the government can play the role of of weeding that out but you can't wish it away you can't throw it out yeah. it's not possible that's what the struggle with the government is going on for last quite some time they're trying to come up with some regulation some consultation paper that's but that's never finishing so i think we should uh, realize yeah, assess absolutely. what exactly is the problem what exactly is the issue and come up with a more appropriate solution for that well rightly said you may like it you may dislike it but of course you can't ignore it you are tempted uh, you know it shows because you are now taxing it but the question still remains mr ajit khurana don't you think it's time to you know uh, find out what is good in it and what is bad in it why not bring clarity on this particular issue why are we waiting you know for something like this because tomorrow if a crash like this happens you know with a coin you know that exists here in india uh, what will happen to the you know thousands and lakhs of investors and we know where when we also know that the ticket size is very very small it's uh, you know people in the rural parts of the country that are, that are also attracted to this crypto world i agree in fact we should leave alone waiting for some form of a global consensus i think that's a waste of time i don't think the world has been a consensus on any topic we wouldn't even be able to generate a consensus among all stakeholders even within india so in the absence of somebody willing to bring about a regulation or better yet a regulator at the very least i'm not saying i'm happy with this i'm saying this is the very least we should have a creeping regulation like we've already tweaked some part of our income tax act 
to accommodate crypto. Let's do that for the One Act, the RBI Act, SEBI Act, FEMA, et cetera, and get this thing going in the right direction, as opposed to talking about pirates of the Caribbean, which, you know, frankly, every investable asset in the world would seem like Caribbean pirates if there were no regulation. It's absolutely true. So we clearly have to not just comment on it, but do something about it. Yes, and what should be done? That's the question. That's the million dollar question and we're not getting an answer. We keep on having these debates again and again and that's the reason today, you know why I again picked up this particular issue because I want people to give some direction probably that the government can take at this point in time and Kushbu Jen, what can be the right way forward? Because in India as well, this ecosystem is expanding. There are investors uh, who are putting in money into something where you don't get anything tangible. But then what we are only getting is, you know, these kind of scary statements from the Reserve Bank of India. Now, even the chief economic advisor has echoed the same concern. Absolutely. So I, I mean, I completely agree with all the three panelists before that there is a need uh, for a global consensus, whereas, whereas crypto or regulating of crypto world is 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 uh, in question but i would say that india need to act maybe you know a light touch regulation before it becomes a trillion dollar mistake like you know and we are not asking for a ban like a china like style of a prohibition but there has to be some accommodation with cryptocurrency we cannot close eyes it's existing there are underlining uh, uh there are underlining technologies along with it and the future calls for it. Even with a shaky situation as of as on date, people have invested. India has become one of the, the users have become one of the largest holders of, of cryptocurrency. And, and you see that we also have a lot of crypto exchanges coming and the situation that is created today has forced our Indian uh, inks to move out of India because of, because of this turbulence or because of the shaky situation which we have it today or limbo, I would say which we have it today recent example of i think one of the largest crypto exchanges by the volume has shifted its base to mumbai uh, to uh, relocated itself to dubai or a lot of other small small exchanges are also relocating it uh, out of out of india thinking that okay we don't know the state also there are startups who are who are coming up. They feel that to get investments or to get a global global exposure, it becomes difficult because the state in India is yet not clear whether uh, it's legal, it's illegal, what's happening. So I would say looking at all these things and also one has to understand that, yeah, the situation has come up that you have put in taxes, as I think one of the earlier speakers said, that you're putting taxes, but at the same time, you're not, you're not legalizing uh, uh, or, or regulating or legalizing the, uh, the crypto. So with this tax situation that has come up is that many Indian users, the crypto holders, have moved to a decentralized exchanges that do not collect know your customer data in an attempt to avoid taxes. So something definitely has to be done by the government it cannot come up with a regulation which stifles or with, with which you know kills this industry but you need to come up with a light touch regulation is what i would say or at least some some uh, hints towards coming up uh, coming up with with uh, uh, you know recognizing this so that uh, and we can wait for a global consensus because it cannot be just india it has to it there has to be a global approach so but at least there should be some way forward for industry to understand this hmm. Absolutely. Clarity is what is needed right now. Dr. Aruna Sharma, the uh, Economic Affairs Secretary, had recently said that the government is soon going to finalize a consultation paper. The government has uh, been reiterating the need for a global response when we know that, you know, the challenges posed are global. Can the solution be India-specific? And what can that solution really be? Immediately, what is it that the government can do as far as the current scenario is concerned? Uh, you have really pointed out very well that it is not that the entire globe is also waiting for the global consultation. During the Russia-Ukraine war, crypto played a very, very vital role. You will be amazed to know that the sanctions against Russia used crypto and the benefits to be given to Ukraine uh, during the war, the crypto was used to in the supply chain completely uh, to equip them. And that was the time when European Union, United States, and Dubai 
tweaked their uh, regulatory mechanisms for looking towards Web 3.0. So crypto was the first step towards it and they have come up with it. Singapore is already very, very focused upon it and said to be a very well drafted. So in the sense, it's not a clean slate where the world is waiting. So India should also not wait. It is very, very important. And my worry is like uh, very rightly said, one of the major exchanges already shifted to Dubai and Dubai is like an extended arm, not very far off from India. I have gone through in detail about the regulation draft of the Dubai, which they have already rolled down a red carpet to head towards becoming a hub for Web 3.0. And the worry is that it will be an Indian brain migration, which will make a success to Dubai Web 3.0 if we do not come up with a regulation. And what we need in the regulation are very clear points. Number one, you define crypto as an asset class. Number two, automatically SEBI rules and taxation measures become more sensible than of uh, the cuff numbers of 30% and 1% TDS and all the humor you had of 0.1 and 1% because of some wrong reporting on the web. So these kind of things are very, very important to get the clarity. Number two, you know, as you rightly mentioned, the small takers are investing into it to make them aware that it is speculative. And number three, like in mutual fund, there is no guarantee which the government gives. Here also, there'll be no guarantee, not like your bank account, where you have a five lakh uh, protection zone hmm. or uh, security zone, it will not be applicable. So these things are not difficult to come so hmm. that the clarity comes and exchanges remain in India, they function in India, and they are able to deliver in a better way. Uh, otherwise, this migration and uh, I have hmm. compared what the US says and what the EU is tweaked it and what the Dubai says, that's no, uh, nothing, something where the thought hmm. process has not gone in India. So I think it's high time we come with the first paper and then hmm. keep on graduating upon the uh, regulatory mechanisms as the learning moves ahead. Okay, interesting. Mr. Subhash Chandragarh, let me play the devil's advocate here. Uh, we all, you know, always keep on asking, why is the government not coming out with, uh, you know, clarity on this particular subject? I want to ask you, what has the crypto world or the operators who are there, you know, very active in this crypto ecosystem in India, what have they done really to end the opacity that it, you know, really creates and which is leading to doubts? Do you think something needs to be done from the industry side as well? So before I come to the industry, I think let's recognize that there is certain very key characters of this entire ecosystem, which if we don't recognize, we'll probably not reach to the right kind of solutions. Number one, like environment or climate, it's a global thing. None of the uh, crypto uh, currencies which are uh, owned by Indians and all are uh, sort of created in India. These the, This operates now in virtual world. The global operations are all there. They don't uh, respect the national boundaries. They don't respect the national laws, etc. And it's very difficult to uh, sort of regulate or come up or legislate about a kind of phenomenon which is so global and so virtual. Um, so uh, this fact we should keep in mind. The second fact is that we have um, uh, sort of overswayed the debate by two, two factors. Number one, these investors, uh, they have invested and therefore what happens if there, if there is a crash or something of that sort. And second, the uh, Reserve Bank that there is some uh, outside currency coming, some unofficial or unofficial currency is coming, which will disrupt the rupee, et cetera. These two factors, are not actually that big, but they are. Uh, they have hijacked the debate uh, completely. The investors have been investing uh, for profit. It is their greed. Uh, it's not. They, they're not. They're not holy cows. They're not people who need excessive uh, sort of respect or protection. People invest 
invested in Paytm, people invested in LIC, et cetera, they also lost money. So even if some investors lose money in crypto uh, by investing, I have no sympathies with them. Let us not get, let's get to the real debate. The real debate Mr. Gard, then that, why should the government be jumping and eager to recognize a purely commercial activity which wants to operate like a secret financial cult? No, it's not a secret financial cult, by the way. I think this is a misnomer to say, like it's misnomer to call it uh, Caribbean ca pirates. They, this is no cult. This opens, this, this is available in public chain. This is available to everyone. You can join. No one is preventing anyone to join. In fact, there is too much of an open invitation for uh, anyone to join in any of the crypto platforms. What is required, I, I think, is that it mm. is yeah. this, it is, changing the uh, the entire system in terms of taxation let us say for income value creation the assets we have done some steps rightly towards um, uh, taxing the income from the capital gains there is a, a lot of agenda remaining about how to tax the value value added tax etc how to tax the asset kind of thing there is a lot of work there yeah. the big work to my mind which is which we are not attending to is that this system operates in what we call decentralized autonomous organizations they're very different than the companies or the partnerships yeah, or other yeah. forms of businesses which we are. It will require a new kind of companies act. It would require a new kind of DAO act to deal with this new organization. It operates in a system which is self-executing yeah. smart contracts. We have no laws, no system to regulate and to de define and decide how the uh, the smart contracts are operated. So the government's uh, discussion paper, to my mind, yeah. we are still waiting to see what it comes out. It should be saying that how the government proposes to deal with DAOs, how the government proposed to deal with these smart contracts, how the government proposes to deal with the taxation, how the government proposes to deal with the stable coins, which are substituting the remittances and many other things. And how does it propose hmm. to deal with the currency itself, right. which is a smaller one? How does it propose to deal with the assets, which because the crypto systems com combines everything into an asset? That requires to be recognized and um, uh, yeah. sort of dealt with. So how does this, all these kind of things, and then in partnership with the global system, how does uh, the, uh, the, the government intend to look forward to? I think that's what is where the real debate is, yeah. not by these investors and excessive concerns about the currency aspect of it. Okay, Mr. Ajit Kurana, what should be the right sort of uh, uh, move, uh, you know, from the current uh, situation that we are in, uh, considering uh, uh, what Mr. Garg said just now? Because even though, you know, everybody is welcome to join this world, which is now virtual, which has no boundaries at all, there is culpability and accountability issue that still continues. So just I was, as I was recovering from the pain of being told that I am a part of a group of Caribbean pirates, Tina, you told me that I am part of a secret financial cult. So I am like moving from one social grouping to the other without really knowing why I am being characterized like that. Having said that, what is the next step? Because there that, is no defined boundary. So, so the point is... That is that, why I specifically mentioned there is no defined boundary. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, actually... Some people are treating this like the poetry we read in school called Nine Blind Men and the Elephant, where they focus on one aspect of the elephant and think that's the whole elephant. So that is problem number one. At least as a government or a country, mm -hmm. I should say, we should look at it holistically, as Mr. Garg very eloquently explained. And the second thing, I think, you know, what is the next step? I think that that is very important as opposed to saying what will it look like 10 years from now or when every regulation is solved. I think that certain amount of disclosures Certain amount of registration, note, I'm not yet saying regulation or licensing, all of those are great, but they are going to take time. 
every exchange needs to register. They need to disclose certain policies. And I am looking at some countries, especially Canada and Australia, which started their journey this way about three, four years ago, said, show us what you're doing for KYC. Show us what you're doing for AML. Show us what policies that you're following for running an exchange or other such things in a very prudent way by global standards. That could be relatively easy to do because you're just asking these participants to show and come up. Great first step, I would say. Hmm. Okay. Interesting uh, point that you have made. And Kushbu, I want to give you the last word. In your opinion, what should be the right thing to do in the current situation? I would say legislation can be seen as one of the way to effectively deal with ill effects of cryptocurrencies, uh, to deal with uh, the Indian incorporations moving towards uh, different, uh, you know, countries where where things are more favorable for them, and also for safeguarding the uh, users or the crypto investors or buyers in India. So, cryptocurrency legislation or a light touch regulation must mandate all customers' information sharing, other legitimate financial institutions for combating and minimizing also money laundering so we have to we have to see a holistic thing here that it is not just industry but it is it is it is you know the ill effects or 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 uh, uh, or or whatever the situation stringent situation that comes here so we need to put emphasis that regulation should be made should not be made so stringent that it stifles your innovation and strangulate this nascent industry, but it should have a potential to re revolutionize the way global financial system works. I agree it has to be done in a global manner along with incorporating all, all parties in, 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 in stake, but, but a light touch regulation is need of the hour, and this may involve, uh, you know, issuance of a digital currency by RBI is one of the favorable move, but they have to work towards towards uh, uh, bringing in a favorable aspect for the crypto exchanges. All right. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Uh, good to have you today on this very, very interesting and an important subject. We'll see what eventually the government will be doing and how soon can we expect some movement as far as uh, this crypto world uh, in India is concerned. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us here on Urban Debate on Now this evening. Heading